Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're looking at part two of our Remote Connections module. We're going to focus on the sections relating to advanced security auditing, something called NAP quarantine remediation, remote desktop, and published applications. Let's start with that weird name, NAP. That stands for Network Access Protection. You run into this technology whenever you have people connecting from a remote site, and they may be connecting from computers that you don't necessarily have the ability to manage very well. You certainly don't have inside of your network a lot of people who are not running antivirus, people who do not have their firewalls turned on. So why would you allow that same connectivity for people coming into your VPN? After all, when they connect with their virtual private network, they're essentially a workstation on your internal network. And if they're infected with a virus or a worm, there is potential to infect others within your organization over that virtual private network. So we created this technology called NAP, and that stands for Network Access Protection. And like the name means, we can check those machines that are connecting to us to see if some of these things are configured. For instance, is a firewall turned on? Is it registered with the Windows Security Center? Is it enabled? Those are important things if someone's connecting. Same thing for virus protection. Is virus protection installed? Is it updated to the latest set of signatures? Is it enabled properly? We can query that machine and have it tell us if that's really the case. Same thing for spyware, which is a little bit different than antivirus. We want to be sure it's turned on. We want to be sure they're up to date. Then we can go even a step further. Is the operating system and the applications on the operating system updated with the latest patches? We want to be sure that they are completely secure when they're out there in the world. So we can see if it's checked from Windows Update to have its updates done. And we can perhaps see if the client wants to download them right now and install them on that computer. And the last thing we can look for are security updates. Not only is our applications up to date, but all of those patches to the operating system are installed based on the four security se severity ratings that are on the Microsoft Security Response Center. We can configure our NAP to be able to see if that's really the case on those workstations out there and then decide what we'd like to do with them. If any of those things don't apply, if antivirus isn't turned on, if they don't have the latest application updates or the latest security updates, we can put them essentially in a section of the network where they can't cause any harm. This is called remediation. So they would be on a re remediation network in sort of a timeout mode where they now need to have that problem fixed. So we can have them go out to this remediation network and perform the updates they need, turn on the things that they need before they're ever allowed into the network. And you might have a Windows Server update services out there with all of the patches they would need so they can download essentially from your local machine. You can have all of your updated signatures out there for them to download and only then do we allow them back onto the network. Now, that's just an option. You may be in an environment and may have not have enough resources to create a remediation network, and that becomes a little bit more complicated. Then your end user is just going to be shut out of the network completely, and it's up to them to be able to handle the updates and to correct the problems on their machine. Those people may not have the resources personally to be able to do that. You may have to be your own help desk, or you may now have to call back to the corporate help desk and have somebody step through resolving those problems. On my Windows Server 2008 R2, I have in my server manager under my network policy and access services, I have NPS for my local network policies. This is my network policy server. Inside of that, I have a set of network access protection options. I can choose my system health validators, my Windows security health validators, and I can look at the settings that I have. I have a single default configuration in here right now. And if I double click, you can see you have quite a few options here for is the firewall enabled, is antivirus enabled. I'm going to scroll down a bit can see the others are my automatic updates turned on. And you can even restrict access for specific security updates. And you can set the priority of security updates that must be installed on this computer who's trying to connect in via a remote site. 
when people are offsite, it becomes a little bit more difficult to understand exactly what's being used on your network. Those people aren't sitting in the same room as you or the same building. Sometimes you aren't exactly sure who's connected into the network and what they might be doing. So you need some way to understand who may have logged on, who may have logged off, what happened during that time frame. So you want to look at some ways to do security auditing. One way to do this is to look at information from remote users. So you'll want to enable a configuration in your group policies under Computer Configuration, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Local Policies, Audit Policy, and decide to audit log on events for all of those different settings. You can see these log on events though in your security log in your event viewer and now everything will be consolidated to that central reporting. So you'll be able to know exactly when somebody logged on and exactly when someone logged off. You'll see these logs in your event viewer. So if you go into your event viewer, this happens to be on my Windows 2008 R2, but it works the same on your Windows 7. You can go to your Windows logs under security and see then all of those examples of somebody logging on or logging off over those remote connections. And they'll be similar to the standard log on and log off messages that you'll get on a normal workstation. So you can see exactly what was going on, who logged on, where it was coming from, different port numbers, the method that they use to authenticate. There's a lot of information you can gather whenever you're looking at some of these security logs. And you also, you'll notice, see when people log off. So it gives you some options to be able to consolidate everything in one central place. And now you'll know exactly what's happening on your network. We've used Remote Desktop in some of our previous videos, but there's some other capabilities, especially from remote locations, that become very, very useful when you're using Remote Desktop. There's a capability with Remote Desktop we can set up called Remote Desktop Gateway Server. If you're familiar with Microsoft's former product, Terminal Services Gateway, this is the new version of the Terminal Services Gateway. This allows you to set up a server that many people can connect to simultaneously. If you recall, when we were using Remote Desktop, it was one person connecting to one computer. But what if that one computer you could have hundreds or even thousands of people connecting to simultaneously? That gives you a lot of flexibility to provide application services from one central point, and those end users won't have to install any applications except for the ability to run the remote desktop to be able to run those apps. You can manage this with group policy. The group policy you'll want to keep in mind here is under your user configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, remote desktop services, and specify what that remote desktop gateway is so that whenever someone starts up their applications, they'll know exactly what RD gateway to go back to. And this allows you to use a functionality called remote app. This is a really nifty functionality. Imagine running an application from a terminal services, or in this case, remote desktop gateway server, except on your desktop, it looks as if that application is local on your computer. Really extends the, the ease of use and makes everything very, very seamless for the end user. It's very, very nice in how it works. Let's go through a remote app, and I'll show you how I configured it and then what it looks like for your end users. We're back on my Windows 2008 R2 domain server that I've also loaded remote desktop services on. And I have a remote app manager that's running on there. There's a lot of options here with this remote app manager to create these files called RDP files. And these RDP files you can then drag and drop onto an end user's desktop. And all they need to do now is click that RDP file and it would run the application locally on their desktop. You can also create a Windows installer package for this that would package up the install. So they can run an executable or an MSI file and install these little remote desktop, remote app packages, even multiple packages on their desktop simultaneously. I've created a remote app program right here that's going to run the Active Directory Administrative Center, has a path set up. This is using the remote desktop capabilities. And I don't have any arguments here, nothing extra added to the command line to be able to run that. I created an RDP file from this, and I moved that over to my workstation. And now I'll show you what happens when your end user runs that RDP file. We're now on Daniel Jackson's desktop. And on his desktop, I have this little icon here for Directory Services Administrative Center. 
and it's a remote desktop connection. It tells you right here in the icon. In fact, if we look at the properties, you can see it's an RDP file that I created and simply dragged right off of my domain controller and dropped right here. Now it's on my desktop. And just because it's a file, I can really put it anywhere on my Windows computer. I thought this was a great place to put it. Let's click this and see what we get. It starts up the remote app. And now it looks as if I'm running the Active Directory Administrative Center on my desktop. It's the splash screen. It's the window. It looks like any other window that I would have on my computer. But in reality, this application is running on a completely different server. If I bring up my Task Manager, it's going to show you under the processes running that I have a number of things happening here. None of them happen to be that Active Directory Administrative Center. In fact, it's something that's a little bit different. You can see that I've got a Microsoft Terminal Services client. If I make this a little bit bigger, we can look at the description. It's a remote desktop connection. So I'm only using 10, 10,000K, 10 meg of memory and not really doing much more than that, a very small amount of memory. And I can run some very, very big programs in here. Now, the remote connectivity, of course, is going back and forth between me and that terminal services machine. So it's going to be important that I have a nice network connection between the two. But because I have some customization on what I can do with terminal services, I can turn down the number of colors. I can make sure sounds don't go across the connection and other things. I can really have a, a nicely optimized application experience without actually running the applications locally on my desktop. Let's review some topics from this part two of our remote connections module. Our first question is, how can you restrict users from remotely connecting to your network if they're insecure? We don't want P devices that have antivirus that's turned off and their firewall isn't working connecting to our network. So we can take advantage of our network access protection or our NAP policies. Our next question, where is access log information stored for later auditing? We want to go back and see who logged on to the network or who logged off of the network. We can go right to our event viewer and look inside our security log. And the last question, which remote desktop technology allows you to run remote applications seamlessly on your desktop? We demonstrated just how seamless that was using Remote App. That covers our requirements for this second part of our remote connections module. We've looked at advanced security auditing. We've done some NAP quarantine remediation, looked at remote desktop, and how we can do published apps on those remote desktop sessions. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free Microsoft 7680 videos, we have other training videos on our website, some online forums, and much more. You can visit us at ProfessorMesser.com.